Do you want a sneak peek to the latest cell phone technology, home appliance, or the vehicle trends? Well, for more than 40 years, this event has been the global stage where next generation innovations and in technology breakthroughs have been introduced. And we're talking about the International Consumer Electronics Show in Las Vegas. We have nationally recognized consumer trends and technology expert Todd Townsend here with a very rare preview of some of the latest technology available for 2017. Todd, I told you I'm so jealous you're there. You get to be there with all the cool tech. This is really cool, Tina. Yeah, this is a place to be. This is the largest technology show in the world. It actually started back in 1967 with about 17,000 people attending. And that sounds like a lot, but this year they're expecting almost 180,000 people at this show. It's all the people come from all over the world to get together to conduct business and just see what's going on. And you see everything that runs the gamut here from far out futuristic things to technology being embedded in products that we already use in our daily lives. For example, Whirlpool's here with their French door refrigerator. They actually won an award at the show last year and they've won another one this year and this is called their French door within door refrigerator there's a little lever under the handle here and when I open it you have this compartment right up front it's got its separate active cooling system it's a separate cold space so this is actually colder right here than the rest of the refrigerator and you can just grab beverage really easy and get it out now if you close the door and open it normally it's a normal French door refrigerator so how often do we open the fridges in our house every day it makes it really easy to use and do that that's one example now if we go a little bit further into the future Future Honda's here at the show. They've got something called the Honda Dream Drive virtual reality system for passengers in their Honda vehicles. So this is a prototype. So in the future, as a passenger, you're going to be able to be riding down the road and look out the window and get real-time information about the surroundings outside that you're looking at. So for example, you're on a road trip, you're going by the Grand Canyon, you can take a look at it and you're going to get information in this headset about what you're seeing on the Grand Canyon, the history of it, what this, this rock formation is, things like that. And if you take it back into the city, city area, you can say go down the road and you go by a coffee shop and you look at the coffee shop through the headset and it's going to give you information about it, whether it's open, it's going to show a menu of what's available. You can actually reach out and touch the menu in virtual reality and order a coffee and pull in and it's ready when you pull in. That's where this is going. They're merging, taking the real world and the virtual world, things like cars, and bringing it together. And if, you, and if you want to come a little bit more back down to earth, now phones are still being innovated on here. We've had phones for several years now, and they've been a hot topic of the show. But what's happening is some of the really high-end features are getting into more affordable phones. So LG's here with the K10. This has got a 5.3-inch really high-def screen. It's got this metal frame. It's really high-end looking. 13-megapixel rear camera. It's got a 120-degree wide-angle lens on the front camera, which lets you take selfies with groups of friends without a selfie stick. Those kind of features used to really be in the higher end of really expensive phones. They've now trickled down to the mid-range, so they're more affordable for everybody. So there's lots of things like that. You can learn about some of this stuff on betterstuffforlife.com. And there's also a lot of really futuristic things out here, too. Well, Todd, I know you said some of this, like, you know, what you were showing us, that really feels kind of far-fetched and in the future. Do, we, do they tell you kind of when this stuff will be available? We know, Tina, it's, it's kind of a tiered system. So some of the things you see here at the show are available today. And then there's kind of that second tier where it's like six months, maybe a year, a little more than a year out. And then you get to the stuff that's really kind of far future, three to five, maybe five plus years out. So for example, here, we're seeing a lot of stuff around artificial intelligence going into everything. We're seeing things like drones that have been out for a couple years becoming really smart. They're getting smarts in them. So they have special cameras and sensors and artificial intelligence so they can fly around rooms without running into anything on their own. Um, um, you're seeing this, this show is turned into a half of a car show as well as cars become full of technology and eventually become electric. Automakers are looking ahead to say in the, in the not too distant future, five to 10 years down the road, when your car is going to drive itself, the inside of your car is going to turn into like a living room or a bedroom. You're going to be able to sit there and work or sleep or whatever. And so automakers, the major names are here showing their idea and visions in some of these concept cars of what we're going to be doing in our cars five to 10 years down the road. Well, I'm so glad we didn't even have to fight the crowds down there at the show because you just showed us all the cool stuff and told us about it. So thank you so much. Go and look at some more of that cool tech. We'll see you in a little while. You're welcome, Tina. Thanks so much for having me. Don't go anywhere. The Morning Blood. We'll be right back.